Hello, Terunofuji gets another you show. Kota Nawaka gets a promotion and a big fish, and we all get to talk about it. Stop throw! Hockey Oya! Hello and welcome to the dojo here on Mr. JWAG's channel. This was a heck of a January Basho and we are going to talk all about it. But before we do, I got to drop this one. Yes, uh, Jay Wags was wrong about a lot of things that went on in this tournament. Now, if you look back to the predictions, there were a lot of a lot of predictions I did get right, but like like the 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 main plot of this Basho, I missed completely. I thought Terra Nafuji was sort of done. I thought we could stick a fork in him. This was just going to be the retirement tour. No, the big dog has some fight left in him. Terra Nafuji wins his ninth Yusho, and he is talking about sticking around for a tenth. Well, let's talk about that. Fun fact, this is not only Terra Nafuji's ninth Yusho, but now he has won every single Yusho in the six Yusho a year calendar. Every single one of them. So yes, this was very unexpected. Uh, Terra Nafuji has not been the picture of consistency and health. Well, I guess of consistency, but he has consistently been missing Basho. This last past Basho was only the second Basho of the last nine he has completed, but both of those were you show. So the real question is, how much time is this going to buy Terra Nafuji? Well, if you look back to my How Much Kyujo is Too Much Kyujo, specifically for Yokozuna episode, check that one out, uh, I postulated that we have never seen in modern sumo uh, a Yokozuna be forced to retire within a year of winning a you show. Well, we, we, we might see that put to the test in this one. But I would have to think that he has bought himself some leeway, so I would say that the, the Yokozuna Deliberation Council won't be recommending anything stern until at least Nagoya. Can he get the 10th Yusho? Well, as I said before, I think the best case scenario for Terra Nafuji this year would be finishing two Basho. And he, he's finished one, and I still think that that is the best case scenario for Terra Nafuji. Uh, he does look better, but he still doesn't look like Terra Nafuji used to, and I, I think we can just sort of say goodbye to, like, beast mode Terra Nafuji. And now we have Good level Terra Nafuji, which is still seems to be better than everyone else, but the gap is a lot closer than it was, say, 18 months ago. And one of the Rikishi closing that gap is Seki Wake, now Ozeki Kotonowaka. Yes, Kotonowaka got a 13 and 2, a career best tournament. He ended up getting the June Yusho, losing in a playoff on the last day to Terra Nafuji. He had an amazing tournament, losing only to Wakamoto Hado and Terra Nafuji in the regular season, and then again in the playoff. His complete Ozeki run was 33 wins over three tournaments, with two Jun Yusho, a Gino Show, and a Kanto Show. An excellent resume for Ozeki promotion. And we're going to have four Ozeki on the Bansuke for the first time since July 2021. I did not predict this breakout for Kota Nawaka. I was expecting the breakout to come in May or July. It appeared a little bit early for us, which is awesome. But I think we should just uh, put a little bit of a pause on the hype train. First of all, uh, he ended up losing twice to a Terra Nafuji who seemed to me about 70% full kaiju. He also did not face Takakesho and Hoshodu, both went Kyujo. And because of the injuries, we're, we're going to talk about those in a second, and because of the, the multiple Kyujo, he ended up with a, a, not necessarily the strongest possible uh, schedule down the stretch. In the last five days, Kotonowaka ended up facing Maegashira 11 Oho, Maegashira 14 Onosho, and on the very last day, when like fighting for the championship, he faced Maegashira 4 Tobizaru, who had a 7-7 seven and seven record on that day. None of these Maegashira were even within a win of the leaderboard when they faced him. So my feelings about Kota Nawaka in this tournament are similar to my feelings about Kidoshima from the last tournament. I think this was like a best case scenario tournament for Kota Nawaka at the moment. I don't think this is a shift in the true talent level. I do think there is one that is still very possible for Kota Nawaka a little bit further down the line, and for Kidoshima for that matter. Kirishima, of course, was our defending champion coming into January, had an excellent tournament, was not quite able to close the deal, but 11-4 is an excellent tournament for an Ozeki, and we'll see if he ends up winning in March if they would allow him, like, a, a possible dip on the way to the Yokozuna rope. Our other two Ozeki did not do quite as well. Hoshodu, unfortunately, right at the very end of the tournament, right when he was, like, fighting for the, the championship, ended up getting Kyujo. Uh, and unfortunately, fulfilling the new Ozeki Kyujo curse, where all of them seemed to go Kyujo within their first three tournaments at Ozeki. And he, may, he only had one more day to go. Uh. 
But of course, he got to 10 wins, so he will not be Kataban in the next tournament, like Takakesho will. Yeah, a little worried about Takakesho, uh, but hoping some time off will be good for the neck and he will come back strong and get at least 8 wins in March. We're hoping. And yeah, as I mentioned, just way, way too many Kyujo this tournament. Uh, I mentioned this on the quick strike, but we, we just kept getting Kyujo as, as we were going. We ended up with Takiyasu going Kyujo twice, Takakesho, Hokuseiho, Aoyama, Asanoyama, who ended up returning later in the tournament, Hokuto Fuji, and Hoshoryu. So that's eight Fusen wins that got sort of thrown into the sumo tournament, and that can really affect the outcome of a tournament, especially when there are wrestlers up at the top of the Bonsuke, like Hoshoryu and Takakesho. Onosho ended up getting promoted very heavily in the second week, and would that have happened if he hadn't gotten two Fusen wins on the seventh and ninth day? I, a lot of people have been complaining about this. I know I'm not the only one. Like a, a lot of people seem to be getting hurt. I personally don't support a return to the Kosho Sato system where you could take tournaments off. Uh, what I would like to see is that in between Basho, perhaps maybe we don't do quite as many tours as they seem to be doing. Speaking as someone who has toured as a performer, there's just something just soul crushing about finishing like a hard two week run and then you're ready to rest and then they say, get on the bus and whoo, it's really rough. Maybe like instead of doing like all the tours, maybe they do like four tours and like in the summer and in the winter, go home for a little break. So we still have a Yokozuna, very strong. We now have four Ozeki, but the lower Sanyaku is looking a little thin. So who's getting promoted? Well, Daisho was our only holdover. He will stay at Sekiwake with a nine and six. And it looks like Wakamoto Haru is going to get promoted from Maegashira one. A very, just, he was a Sekiwake like just two tournaments ago. He deserves to be up there. Go Wakamoto Haru, had 10 wins and a Kinboshi. He looked great. The first Komasubi slot is going to go to Maegashira 2 Abi. He got a 8 and 7, ended up doing really well in the second week, ended up winning 7 in a row, so good on you, Abi, for that. The second Komasubi slot, we are going to need, uh, we, we talked about this a little in the quick strike, we had a very interesting Banzage with the way everything shook out after the tournament. So yeah, we are going to need to either over-promote Nishikigi or Asanoyama. So Nishikigi's in Maegashira 5 with 8 wins, so that is a big jump up. But Asanoyama is Maegashira 7 with 9 wins, but how much credit will they give him for coming back from Kyujo? That's what I'm wondering about. Uh, but my gut is saying they're going to go with the higher-ranked wrestler, and it's going to be Nishikigi in that Komasubi slot. But Asanoyama, uh, he'll be pretty high up there, definitely back up in the joy. And now it's time for Uncle Sumo's Attaboys. <laughs> Yes, Uncle Sumo's Attaboys, a recurring segment where we give a little extra praise to those rikishi who maybe didn't get all the big prizes and the yushos and the fancy bangles and things. We'll start with Maegashira 15 Ono Sato, but he did get a bangle. He got a Kanto show and 11 wins in his Makauchi debut. He got promoted so heavily down the stretch, he faced Terra Nafuji. In his first Makauchi tournament, I'd consider that very successful. I thought Ono Sato had a great tournament, but he definitely hit his very first ceiling in Makauchi, and that ceiling's name was Koten Waka. In fact, you can literally see the moment where he hits his first ceiling against Koten Waka. I love this guy's wrestling. Uh, he seems to cut the ring in half with every step, much like his Oyakata, the former Kisun Sato, and I'm expecting big things out of him for the rest of the year. Maegashira 11, Oho. He ended up getting 10 wins, and I, I realize I've been uh, I've been a little down on Oho in the past few episodes, but this was a very good showing. Hopefully this is going to be the end of seeing Oho like down in low Maegashira, and he can start getting some momentum to get up into the Joy Sanyaku conversation. Maegashira 14, Kota Shoho, fighting his way back to Makauchi for the second return trip. Ended up getting a 9 and 6. Uh, ended up getting promoted down the stretch because he did very well in the first week. It looks like whatever was ailing him has been fixed. So let us hope that going forward, Kota Shoho will be a little more consistently good. It is Kota Shoho, so the next tournament will probably be like a 2 and 13. But for now, Kota Shoho, boy. Maegashira 10 Tamawashi. He got a Kachikoshi at age 39. As long as he can stay healthy and in Makauchi or Judo through the November tournament, he will have the record for most consecutive matches in sumo history. Here's hoping he gets it, but every Kachikoshi will help. Every time this man gets a Kachikoshi, he gets an attaboy. 
Maegashira 17, Shimazu Umi ended up with a 9 and 6 from the, the second to last rank on the Banzuke. Always a very high pressure spot, especially when making your debut. Uh, he's a little long in the tooth. He's 27, a little old to be making his debut. But 9 wins is very respectable and hopefully he will stick around for a bit. And we'll get to learn a little more about Shimazu Umi. My Gashira 11 Surugisho. Now, we don't talk about him a lot, because, I mean, he, he just sort of hangs down there like the Judeo My Gashira line, but he's been putting together some solid tournaments. He's gotten Kachikoshi in five of his last six Basho, and he's going to be up in the single-digit My Gashira for the next tournament. Well, he's probably going to get pushed down a little bit, but hey, you got there. Atta boy. Now it's time for Worried. A recurring segment where we look at some wrestlers who did not have a great basho, and we ask ourselves if we are worried about them going forward. We are worried about Maegashira 7 Asanoyama. Okay, so he, he ended up going Kyujo, but coming back, getting nine wins, he, he, he seems to be doing okay, but we were expecting a lot more out of Asanoyama when he returned from his, like, the, the COVID uh, protocol thing is. I was expecting Ozeki. I know a lot of you were expecting Yokozuna, but he just seems to keep stalling out up in the joy, and it's because he keeps getting hurt mid-tournament. Three of his last four Basho, he got hurt mid-tournament. Now, he returned for all of them and finished all four, but if we're talking Ozeki run, that's a minimum of four and probably more like five or six tournaments up in the Sanyaku with, if it not like perfect health, but at least perfect attendance. Now, I am a sucker for a redemption arc, but Asanoyama, we got to see it in the ring. Maegashira 13 Endo. Ooh, I'm worried. He looked really bad. Uh, he ended up getting only five wins in this tournament. Uh, he, he might be in the Judeo Demotion conversation. We'll talk about that in a second. But of his five wins, he beat Takanosho, who got ten wins, who had a, a good tournament. But his other wins came against a guy who got three wins, a guy who got four wins, a guy who got five wins, and a guy who came up from Judeo. So uh, this to me is saying that this is, this is not at all strong Endo. Uh, uh, hoping this is a temporary thing, but if not... Uh, Catch him while you can, because he's he's not doing very well. Maegashira 15 Tomakaze. Only got five wins. He is definitely heading down to Judeo. <sighs> my, my optimism on Tomakaze has dimmed a bit. Now, of course, uh, those of us who've been watching Sumo for a bit remember Tomakaze shot up the Banzuke, was just about to make Sangyaku, and then huge knee injury, dropped down the Banzuke, has worked his way back up to Makauchi, and this was his second time in, only five wins. <sighs> He's 29. I, I'm thinking this is about as good as we are going to see from Tomokaze. And being like a top 50 wrestler in sumo is amazing, but we had him pegged for like top 20, top 15 back in the day. So let's let's adjust expectations accordingly. Two guys I am not worried about, Maegashira 1, Atami Fuji, and Maegashira 3, Gonoyama. Now, Atami Fuji, this was expected. This was going to be the first ceiling. Uh, this was the first time he was going to be facing, like, all of the Sanyaku. This was the first time he was going to be getting, like, Ozeki, 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 Sekiwake right off the top. And I thought he handled himself very well. Six and nine is a very respectable score for your first time up in the joy. This is going to be a learning experience. I expect this just to be a speed bump and a brilliant career to follow. Now, Atami Fuji is 21, so it's much easier to be optimistic than Gonoyama, who's like 25. Now, 25, you can still have room for a bit of a jump, but uh, I'm not expecting as much from that. Uh, if he does have a jump, I'm expecting it to be a jump from like the joy level where he seems to be right now, maybe up to like uh, the lower Sonyaku level. I still don't see an Ozeki run for Gonoyama, but I'm very confident he's going to stick around the joy lower Sonyaku region for the next few years. Not worried. Now let's see who's taken that midnight train to Judeo. All right, the demotion picture for this tournament is a really cool one. Uh, I can see us having a case for either four, five, or six demotions from Makauchi to Judeo and vice versa. So in order, my demotion list starts with, of course, Maegashira 17, Aoyama, who ended up with an O and 15 with the Kyujo. And for those of you who are curious, no, uh, Aoyama is almost assuredly not going to jump all the way from Makuchi to Makushida through Judeo with an O and 15. That has not happened since uh, 1928. Uh, it's likely he'll stop like around Judeo 12. Also joining him will be Maegashira 16, Bushozan, with only four wins. As we said, Maegashira 15, Tomakaze, with five wins. Maegashira 16, Takara Fuji with 6 wins. He's heading down to Judeo, and hopefully he'll be bouncing back soon. Now the two maybe demotions I have are Maegashira 8, Hokuseiho. He got hurt, he only got 2 wins, so I could definitely see him taking a tumble down the Banzuke. And as I mentioned before, Endo with only 5 wins at Maegashira 13. He's going to be right at the demotion line. 
And remember, we are losing Maigashira 17 West because we have an extra Sanyaku slot because of Koton Waka's promotion, so remember that. My promotion list looks like this. Judyotu Nishiki Fuji got 10 wins. He is definitely coming up. Dayamami at Judyo 1 East, the Catbird Seat, got 8 and 7. He'll be coming up. Kitano Waka with 10 wins and Roga with 9 wins at Judyo 3. Those two should be coming up. Now the question is, do we get those extra two Hokuseiho Endo Demotion promotions? That would depend on if they are willing to promote Judyo 10 Takeru Fuji who ended up winning the Judeo Yusho with 13 wins, uh, and also Judeo 6 Tokeheate with 10 wins. I personally think they're going to go with the 5 up, 5 down, leaving Endo up and Tokeheate down. We have already received news about the Makushita promotions, and yay! Waka Takakage, of course, will be coming up with a 7 Endo. He'll be jumping way up into the Judeo ranks, uh, hopefully meaning he may only spend one tournament up in Judeo, depending on how well he does. Makushita 2, Tsushi Manada, and Kita Haruma will both be coming up. And Makushita 5, Haku Oho, will be re-promoted to Judeo. Very happy about that. Now, some of you may have guessed by, uh, everything about me. I am a fan of the band The Grateful Dead. I was raised in Northern California. It just so happens when you're a young man uh, and you were raised in Northern California, you are issued the American Beauty Working Man's Dead double live album when you turn 13. You can't help it. So you just eventually get into it or you don't, but you figure it out pretty quick. I, of course, was one of the people who was really into it, but alas, I was sort of too young to actually, like, go to dead concert. Jerry died before I was of age to go to concerts and, like, do the whole scene, so I was just like, all right, I'm probably never going to get to see the dead. But then, Dead and Company was going to be a thing. It was, like, some of the dead, but also, like, John Mayer, and they would be touring again. And I didn't get out to see him, but, like, but they'll tour again, but then they just had their farewell tour. And I missed it. And I was a little sad I missed the Dead & Co. on their farewell tour. But I was in luck because they've just announced a residency at the Sphere in Vegas. Uh, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes farewell tours aren't farewell tours. So I believe strongly that the story of Sumo is still headed into the direction we all think it's going, but this farewell is taking a little bit longer than we thought. Perhaps I was a little too quick to dismiss Terunofuji, but cartilage does not regrow, and as we see with every passing tournament, the wrestlers who are now in their peak, Kidishima and Kotonowaka, they're honing their skills to be ready to take over. I just don't see Terunofuji being able to hold off the challengers for that much longer. But of course, I've been saying that, for about six months now. Perhaps the older generation, Terra Nafuji, and perhaps the generation currently in their peak, who I may have prematurely written off, Kirishima and Kota Nawaka. Perhaps they have a bit more to say than I gave them credit for. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Dohyo. Please, if you have not already, like and subscribe. That just tells YouTube that everyone wants to see the Dohyo, and that's true, right? Stay tuned to the channel. Check out for the community page. I'm going to be asking a few questions about the channel and how, sort of, how we can make things better around here. And also, if any of you have any questions for the next Hagaki Yoi, please hit me up in the comments. I love your questions about life, about sumo, about anything you want to talk about. All right, everyone, stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I will see you next time on the Dohyo. Yeah.